I wanted to reintroduce the idea of chemical leaveners before we dive into the third activity, making chocolate cupcakes. Just to remind you that as opposed to yeast leavening, where the yeast converts sugars to alcohol and carbon dioxide, in chemical leavening we're using the chemical reaction of an acid with a base to produce that carbon dioxide. That's providing the lift, if you will, of the baked product. The point here in the second reaction is that we can use organic acids, in this case it's supposed to be lactic acid, to react with our base, in this case potassium carbonate, to produce that CO2 again. Not always is it going to be this pair of, organ of uh, inorganic acids and bases, monocalcium phosphate reacting with sodium bicarbonate, for example. But we can use the organic acids, that is acids that are present in the food itself, um, acetic acid, vinegar is a good example, tartaric acid, right, one of the main ingredients of baking powder, uh, lactic acid, obviously, and sourdough breads, as we have discussed and will discuss more. Naturally present organic acids can provide chemical leavening. That's so important and interesting and gives rise to lots of other uh, possibilities in the kitchen. So that's where we're going to go with our chocolate brownies. But first, chocolate. Now this slide, I'm doing insufficient justice to chocolate, and we're going to come back to chocolate in a great amount of detail, but I wanted to give you the quick overview before we, uh, as a necessary introduction to how we're going to use chocolate in the kitchen. First of all, here's the cacao tree, Theobroma cacao. You can see the pods here are the, are the relevant structure of the plant. And when we break the fruit open, we see that there's a, a, a thick, hard rind, and inside it are the seeds encased in this sort of spongy matrix. Well, typically when we're preparing our chocolate, before we roast the beans, we allow them to steep and ferment a little bit in their own juices, if you will, and then we roast them. But then press is very important, and we'll talk more about this later, but modern a modern invention in the um, uh, early 19th century uh, is this Dutch process whereby the cocoa butter is physically pressed out of the beans, and what's left behind is a powder that's much more amenable to, to cooking. That's the short version. We'll come back to it again. Uh, here's, just to show you, here's the cocoa butter, um, the, the fats that are squeezed out of the beans. Uh, this would be where we start with white chocolate. Uh, I should point out that um, white chocolate doesn't really have the flavor compounds that are, that are important to chocolate flavor. Um, I do not believe in white chocolate, personally. Anyway, that's how we get from these um, fruits to chocolate itself. And where we wind up in Dutch chocolate is, well, or cocoa powder, is the cocoa solids. And that's where everything interesting, uh, at least in terms of chocolate flavor, is contained. Now, important to us is there's a couple of varieties of cocoa powder. Natural cocoa powder is here shown on the right, is acidic, has a lighter color, um, and it's full of those organic acids as I was talking about. And I want to be careful here because the Dutch invented the press that presses out the cocoa butter, but there's also a Dutch process that treats cocoa powder itself, and the treatment is the t uh, an alkali, usually potassium carbonate, and this creates a pretty distinct color change, right? So again, the acids in the chocolate reacting with the alkali or the base to produce this color change. Um, the reasons for doing this are manifold. There's an improved solubility, which is important, um, as we'll see. There's a color change, obviously, and there's also a change in the flavor as we uh, react those organic acids. <coughs> so you're going to enter into cupcake making, thinking about what kinds of cocoa powder you can use and how you can use that to affect the leavening, the colors, flavors. I'm. I, these are my ideas. I invite you to come up with your own. But again, as you develop your experiment, think about 
what the question is you're trying to address. So what you could ask, for example, is does chocolate and baking soda, or cocoa powder and baking soda leaven as well as cocoa powder and baking powder? One question. And there again, the idea is that the chocolate or the cocoa powder is providing the acid, whereas if you use baking powder, you're not you are relying on the reaction between the tartaric acid and, and sodium bicarbonate in the baking powder to leaven. Another question might be, do natural and Dutch cocoa powders have the same color? Obviously they don't, but what is the effect in the brownie, or I'm sorry, in the cupcake that you're making? Does that color development depend on the leavener? That is to say, if you're using baking soda with your natural um, cocoa powder, does it change color? If you use baking soda with Dutch cocoa powder, do you get any leavening at all? You might imagine that you might not see much leavening because the baking soda has no more acid to react with in the Dutch cocoa powder. Finally, what do you think about flavor? This is a hard one to quantify, but I welcome any attempts to try to quantify this. Does natural cocoa powder used again with baking soda have a mellower taste than the natural cocoa used with baking powder? Again, with baking powder as opposed to baking soda, the natural cocoa acids are not going to react and you might expect the flavor to be distinctly different. So here's the assignment, and let me say, okay, devil's food cupcake. So man, many of you have probably experienced devil's food cake in the past. <coughs> devil's food cake has a very rich, reddish, dark brown color, and that's because natural cocoa powder is paired with baking soda as a leavener in, the, in real devil's food cake. So you see a distinct change in that color and you get to develop a really beautiful color, and that's what I want you to, to play with. So what we've got here is a base recipe for some cupcakes, flour, sugar, vanilla, egg, milk, salt, and then variables, okay? And you can follow these instructions, but there are, very, there are four possibilities here, and I welcome you to explore all you want, but again, if you want the most bang for your buck, read highest grade on your assignment, you're going to address this in a scientific way. But once again, here's some possibilities. Natural cocoa powder with baking soda, I've told you to expect that to result in a color change. But what's a color change? You have to have something, a point of comparison, right? So number two would be, again, that same cocoa powder paired with baking powder now. You're still going to get leavening, right? Tartaric acid, sodium bicarbonate, but maybe not the color change of the natural cocoa powder itself, or maybe less. You could try the same thing with Dutch cocoa powder and see what, and, and at this point you'd be comparing the power of baking powder as compared to baking soda to leaven. That's an interesting problem in and of itself. You can also use melted chocolate. <coughs> so you don't have to use cocoa powder at all. And again, you can explore with what kinds of leavening you want to use there. But remember, um, if you don't provide an acid with your baking soda, you will get no leavening. But get something else to experiment with. So I encourage you, implore you, to try all the options you can think of, but do so by 3.15. That's uh, 10 days from now, or, um, Monday week. So I'd like to see those up by then, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me also say that that week, uh, at a date to be announced, I will have an optional meeting where I hope to sample as many cupcakes as possible. Finally, let me say that I've given you a, a recipe. Feel free to find your own recipe. You can make cupcakes. You can make cake. I do not encourage you to make brownies, however, because brownies um, lack leavening, as many of you probably already know, and that sort of undermines the whole, the whole uh, question that we can address. So stick with some kind of cake, if you will, or cookies, for example. Um, cookies are going to be a similar recipe with a lot more oil or, or fat. So give it a try. Have fun. Enjoy.